And the craziest part, Mandy. What's up, Opportunity Cost Investors? Whereas I thought I was a baller for putting $1,000 into an investment portfolio, Graham Stephan just flexed and became an angel investor to a bank. And we're not talking any bank either. We're talking Yada Technologies, which has taken financial headlines by storm. Now I have to give credit to Eddie Yoon, who first introduced me to Yada Savings, so I understood the concept and the math behind it ahead of time. Which is why in Graham's latest video, when he pointed to Ask Savvy, who demonstrated his returns, I knew I wanted to check it out. A month ago, I was browsing YouTube and came across a video from Ask Sebi, who broke down the so-called best high-yield savings account. However, there was something wrong with Ask Savvy's math. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. We talk about everything personal finance and investing and tie it to what's called opportunity cost. I have a very particular set of skills, skills for calculating and communicating our true performance, which leads me to tell you that there are details about Yada you must know before using the app or after if you're like me and already jumped the gun. Referral link below if you want 100 free tickets. And before all the dislike trolls click away for just disliking a video that's bashing Graham or Sebastian, let me just do this. Hey Alexa, play all of Jesse Opportunity Cost Investing on YouTube. There, that'll teach him. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just joking. And the reason why I make that joke is because I'm not bashing on the two of them. In fact, these are two YouTubers that have such raw talent and I really admire them. Like I really look up to these YouTubers. However, I love talking about rates of return and what your return on investment actually is. So that leads me to tell you that there's math that I would like everyone to know. So of course I watched all of Graham's video, destroyed that like button, and then went right over to Ask Sabby's video where he shared with you his performance. And that's when I discovered the error. So if you watch Sebastian's video, which is linked in the description below, you'll see that he provides a spreadsheet where he measures his rate of return. Now in my personal experience, I rarely see people calculate their actual rate of return because there's so much that goes into it and sometimes it can get really complicated. So I decided to do the math myself using his information and I was shook by the results. And for those of you that are math nerds like myself, I'll make it really simple. Simple interest that is. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> However, what I want to show you is that if you take Sebastian's figure that he says is his rate of return and plug it back into his transaction history, we don't get the same ending balance. In fact, we're about $1,300 short of his actual ending balance. And that would be the first red flag. Why would that be true? That's probably why my teacher was always telling me to check my work after I was done. Except I never listened, I'm sorry. The right way to measure performance in this scenario is to use a metric called the money weighted rate of return. And to keep things real simple so we don't have to pull out a chalkboard in a college class, the money weighted rate of return gives us a percentage that when plagued back into the transaction history is gonna give us an ending balance that we'd expect, the ending balance on the app. This means by using the actual math, like this is legit guys, this is the real figure. By using the actual math, Sebastian's pre-tax annualized Yada return was none other than 2,016,004 0.22% and the craziest part Mandy outperformed Sebastian if we flip it over to Mandy she was a lot less lucky so based off the math Mandy was unlucky and I was actually pretty lucky and before we show you in Excel I need you to pause this video real quick and comment down below what you think Mandy's performance is before I say it ready Mandy's annualized pre-tax yada return was 105,660,465.13%. Holy bleep. <laughs> okay, everyone, so I brought you into the spreadsheet to show you how Sebastian's return when plugged back into the transaction history isn't gonna give us the same ending balance. However, when you use this ludicrous amount that I say it is, you'll see that you actually get the ending amount and it actually is his return on investment, pre-tax of course. So looking at this spreadsheet, we knew Sebastian went from $100 to $3,009.70. Although it wasn't natural growth, he put in contributions. So he started July 12th and he didn't put anything else in. That was the day he put in his original $100. And then on July 19th, there was another $100 that was added. And the next contribution we see is August 16th for $43 and so forth. 
You can check out this spreadsheet that I'm using in the description, or you can see his previous video, which is also in the description. So I'm not gonna belabor that point, but all the contributions are there. The next column is the balance. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a balance, multiply it by a rate, and then add the contributions. We need to know what the rate is. So Sebastian provided that rate for us. He said it was a 5.71% interest rate. And if we wanna get the day by day rate, all you have to do is divide that by 365. And if you wanna see what that would be like annualized, accounting for compounding, you would use this formula. Notice that his number and my number are slightly different. And I suspect that's due to just rounding. And I believe it's only off by 0.02%, so it's not gonna throw off our analysis. So that's what we're working with here. So what we did in this balance column is we took that $100 and multiplied it by his daily rate and then added the contribution. Each day we did that. And by the time we got to September 13th, which is the last day, as you see here, the ending balance was $1,749.52, which does not add up. <laughs> We'd expect the $3,000. And that's what led me to believe that the rate he used wasn't the correct one. So what I did is what's called the money weighted rate of return. And Excel has a way to do this, and I've talked about this in a previous video on how to calculate a money weighted rate of return. And you can check it out in the description below. So I'm just gonna skip over the Excel function, but still tell you the math. So everything you see here is the same as that SEBI's part, except this percentage, 2.75%. You can calculate this using Excel's goal seek, or you can guess and check, but I'm just gonna put this here and you can check out my previous video again on that if you want to. But when you use 2.75%, annualized out, that's the 2 million that I talked about, and you scroll down and you'll see that the ending balance is $3,009.70. All those formulas are the same. So that means that is his actual performance. So let's see Mandy's now because I told you I did Mandy's performance as well. And it's the exact same formulas and the exact same concepts. Except when Sebastian did his interest rate for Mandy, it was 3.17%, which is 0.01% as a daily effective rate or 3.22% a year, adjusting for compounding. If you check the ending balance here, it's $100.50, when we would expect to see $872.41. So this one was pretty far off. We use the money weighted rate of return, and you'll see that we have 3.87% a day, which is just immense, uh, definitely not sustainable. But we follow this all the way down and you see the ending balance is $872.41. And that's what we'd expect to see right there. And in this instance, she actually didn't do any contributions that I saw. And this is why it's so important to leave a spreadsheet. And I did actually go back and saw that Sebastian left his spreadsheet for the statistics and why you'd find APR and APY using statistics, but not his personal experience. So that's why I criticized leaving a spreadsheet even though he had in the past. Uh, but that's it. I mean, that's why those numbers <laughs> are as crazy as they are. It makes sense. Just math. These are performances that make Tesla's year-to-date performance look like Nikola's September performance. So what does this massive return actually mean? And what is a more reasonable return that you would get using Yada? Unfortunately, we don't have one without seeing a longer history and without any of these abnormal incentives that you would get for either referring people or signing on for the first time. Unfortunately though, even with the right information, we still might not get the actual return or at least a good sense of it. Let me tell you why. <laughs> Admittedly, this next part is speculative and subjective, but definitely something to keep in mind. Yeah, as we saw in recent news, Yada is willing to increase their Yada balls, which decreases your odds and your overall return. Now, if a company is willing to do it in the past, I can almost guarantee they're willing to do it again. Also keep in mind, as a newer startup, a lot of people are gonna be joining this app. And as more people join, there's gonna be more people sharing in the pot, which again, decreases your return. To wrap things up, hats off to Ask Savvy for providing a detailed enough spreadsheet where you're able to take his numbers and calculate his true performance. But now let's look and see how we can take this analysis to the next level so we can use it as a credible resource. 
First, we want to see a longer history. And this is not to any fault of his own. He doesn't have a time machine, but definitely something we want to see. Also, we want to ignore any kind of incentives or sign-on bonuses that would skew the average person after already signing up for those events. We want to look at what it would be without any of those miscellaneous data. Also, and this is just technique, I would love to see the spreadsheet linked in the description so that way people can download it and check your math. Which reminds me, all the spreadsheets I used in this video are linked in the description below for you to hold me accountable. Do your worst, internet. Lastly, with both Graham and Sebastian as angel investors in this company, I know for a fact they're never going to do anything that's outside your best interest. I put my full trust in these guys. However, I cannot recommend the app until I have that actual return and a credible resource, which is why I downloaded the app, so hopefully I can provide that to you someday. However, if you still want to download the app, make sure to check out the description in the comment section for my referral link, where you'll receive either 100 or 125 tickets. It says 100, but I got 125 and so have other people. And if you're anything like me and you want to see the math behind how I did all this, Make sure to check out some of my previous videos. Fair warning, I'm a YouTuber, so the video quality wasn't as good as it is now, which reminds me I want to revisit it again in the future. And I've been thinking about doing a live stream where I break down how you can actually calculate your true performance on your investments. So let me know in the comments section if that's something that interests you. However, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you found it helpful, make sure you like that snap button by stocking that subscriber count and Liberty Bell that notification icon. Thanks for watching and until next time.